Yeah, it's been the fun part of this has been like the music videos require so much planning and thought, and this is like, you know, let's just show up and like hang out and be us. Yeah, you kind of forget that you're stressed. being like, you know, recorded. It's more so just casual, like you're having fun. That's the hope. Chatting. Yeah, and you don't want it to feel like a interrogation. Yes, and part yeah. of that for me was like making the whole space be accessible, so that like hours before this, I'm not setting everything up. I'm kind of just coming down, like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Let's make mm -hmm. it happen. Um, we're making it happen. Yeah. Sarah, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you very um, much. So we're here for episode 12. I always forget what number it is. Cool. But we're doing it. So <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you making time for us. Uh, you've been everywhere lately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what are some of the recent adventures? I guess, yeah, a quick two-second summary of who is Sarah and what have you been doing lately? Uh, yeah. So I uh, do photo and media for a few bands. One of the main band is Currents. I also work for Boundaries, uh, Silent Planet as well. Um, we just did a string of tours, Currents and I. We did Australia, then straight to Europe for the Never Say Die tour. And then we just finished up a short little run with Parkway Drive and Memphis Mayfire. And you guys are heading back out in the next week or two? I am heading out with uh, Boundaries on gotcha. that Lorna Shore headliner. That's um, so fun. Yeah, that one's going to be crazy. <laughs> that's and about then, as good of a show as you could watch every night. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be Really, really fun. Yep. It's all friends, too. Package, I know the yeah. whole package, so it's going to be really fun. Yeah. And then I'll, I'm home for, like, 10 days, and then I go out with Currents on the headliner. Jeez. How long have you been, like, in this touring rhythm? Like, it feels like you're home for a month here or there, and then you're generally gone uh, generally gone. Yeah. How I'm long kind of, have uh... you been, yeah, mostly on the road and not so much home? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, so this is one of the longest strings that I've been home. I've When we leave for this tour, it starts um, March 30th. I'll mm -hmm. have been home for six weeks. Um, typically, I'm not home for more than like maybe three weeks to a month. Interesting. Okay. But I actually, on my planner for the year, I started like writing out all the tours that I'm doing where I have the actual dates. And for the most part, I'm not going to be home for more than like 10 days at a time in between my tours so far this year. So is six weeks home like a nice breather or is oh, yeah. it like overwhelming? Like, I don't know what to do for six weeks now that I'm home. It gets about, it kind of gets like that like two weeks in because it's mm -hmm. like the first two weeks I'm like, I don't, I can't wait to do nothing and just be a degenerate mm -hmm. and catch up on my shows and eat a lot of food mm -hmm. and have so much good coffee because good coffee is hard to come by on tour. But it's nice to be able to like just chill for a little bit and mm -hmm. then eventually I'm like, all right, I feel kind of bored because I don't have to work in between tours, which That's is nice. such a blessing. I'm so glad yeah. that I got to that point where I can be comfortable and not feel like I have to get a job when I'm home or like do yeah. side gigs as like a filler. Um, but there are some points where I'm like, I don't mind being lazy. And then other days where I'm like, I should like do some self portraits or, you know, try to fill my time with stuff. But I do some stuff here and there. That's just fun. To, and I think just, it's, just for fun. Absolutely. I think it's important to have fun. And especially one of my things here is like in the tour rhythm, you're just so busy that I was wondering how you stay inspired and keep things fresh. Cause it is such a grind where you're, you're doing something every day. And I guess the venue adds some novelty to it. But it right. is, yeah, every day you're expected to come up with new ideas and good ideas. And there's only, I joke, there's only so many good ideas I can come up with. Yeah, no, and, honestly, same. Yeah. It's tough. Like, that's a very good point, especially with having, starting to tour so much more often now. It is really hard to not feel like you're reaching, like, that burnout part of, like, your creativity. Um, but that's why I'll just, like, sometimes I'll force myself to use that one lens in my bag that I really haven't been using and, try mm -hmm. like, switch up my composition or just try a completely different, like, shooting angle or try to do, like, one show, just video. Like, if I know the lighting isn't going to be too great and the venue isn't that great for, like, portraits or pictures or anything, like, I'll just focus just on video so I give myself a break from photo and then vice versa. Um, I just try my hardest to, like, switch it up and make it feel fresh even though you are shooting the same thing every night like they got the same moves but like you got to make it feel different mm -hmm. um which is no fault to theirs it's just just sitting in the game you're on tour with them yeah. for five to six weeks at a time it's like all right i gotta make a lot of stuff look different but yeah i like the challenge so yeah i think it's a it's a abundance of wealth it's a good thing to have that problem of like i am now you're saying you're home you don't need to go out and do these things so you can kind of recharge ideas mm -hmm. and i think it contrasts back to when we first met back in the good old days oh of, my god you know, the webster where we are doing anything we can to find an opportunity mm -hmm. to shoot i want to know how you like got into camera stuff i feel like i don't know i feel like i met you once you were already doing stuff and i have no idea when is the first camera you get is it for music is it for weddings like what do you Where's your first entry? Into I would photos? say my first camera was like middle school. Okay. I to go that far back, my parents had like a little Canon or it was a Canon or a Sony like little point and shoot mm -hmm. for like soccer games and stuff. But I would always steal it and just go run around and hit, take pictures of worms and dirt and flowers and stuff. Sure, and yeah. I loved pictures and I loved seeing like old family photos on my grandparents' walls and stuff. That was really cool and I was like I kind of like you know, capturing a moment and like a still. Mm -hmm. 
and it kind of morphed into like high school. I think he was freshman year. My parents were like, okay, we'll get you a camera. So they got me an Olympus pen. It was a DSLR. Uh, I got one lens with it. I don't remember. I think it was a 35, Mm -hmm. but I just ran with that. And I started to like get really more involved in like looking into, you know, photography. They got me photography books and stuff like that. I would go to the library. Um, And then in junior year and senior year, I joined the like photo classes. Like it was a digital and a film. So I did Mm -hmm. both uh, courses for that. And I've I never developed film. I feel really, like I should try it's it really point. cool. Yeah. Being in a being in a dark room is really really fun. I wish I could do it more often, but now I just send it out to get scanned because I like it to be more immediate. But one day, if I could have my own dark room, that would be so sick. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. million dollar goal. <laughs> yep. Um, but, but yeah, at that time, is it music that you're interested in photographing? You said like nature and stuff. I think I kind of got more introduced to music photography in middle school because I was I was a I was a concert junkie and mm-hmm. shout out mom she would always bring me to the shows she would, like okay. I was I was like one of those like glamour kills tour type of people like made a parade the main mm-hmm. I loved them and then I kind of got more into like Atreyu Bless the Fall even like AFI mm-hmm. System of a Down my brother introduced me to them but I was always front row always front row so then I started seeing photographers like in the pit, and I'd be like, what are they doing? And so I started to ask a few of them, and they like, oh, I work for a local magazine, or oh, I work for this band or this tour. And I was like, you can do that? It just was so cool to me. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, that's a possibility. So once I started going, going to more shows on my own and with friends, I would like bring my camera if I thought I would be allowed. Sometimes I wouldn't, and I had to go put it back in the car, but then other times I would be allowed to bring it in. and Because mm-hmm. it'd be like the heirloom uh, in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. Yes, I was just thinking about that place yep. the other day. I love, yeah. I love that place. The, that was, was my stomping grounds. The stage there like 10 feet tall? Yes. Am I remembering that right? Maybe 11. <laughs> it was really tall. <laughs> yeah. You're shooting, was, like, you're getting, like, up their nose, getting I every I had, like, hair. memories of that stage the other day out of nowhere. I was just, like, for some reason, I remembered shooting, like, vertically. And I was like, yep. where was that? Where on earth could I have been? Yep. And, or, you, pr- yeah. or you go to the side and step on the speakers mm-hmm. and try not to get yelled at. But there was never really any at, staff yeah. really there to be yelling at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Justin Leach is one of the people who watched me from the mm-hmm. beginning trying. And I owe him a lot, him and Brian Willie. They helped me so much and gave me so many opportunities. But, yeah, I started shooting at the Heirloom after high school. It was, like, 2013. And I just started going to all the shows there. It was, like, early days of Currents. Volumes would play there all the time. I remember Polyphia played there. Was that, like, uh, local-ish, too, like, within driving, like, close yeah, to Yeah, it your... was, like, 10 minutes from my house. It was go. awesome. Yeah, okay. uh, Paris had played there once. Um Crown the Empire, so many bands played yeah, there, and yeah. I was just like, okay. And you didn't have to get a photo pass or anything. Mm-hmm. So Justin was like, yeah, just come on in, and that's where I got my start. And I kind of use the underground the same way of like, yeah, I'll just show up, and whatever is here tonight is what I'm shooting yep, tonight. Yeah, I'll literally. It out. Yeah, shooting um, everything until your finger hurts. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and then when does it start to become like real? So if this is still kind of hobbyish, and you're kind of pursuing it. Uh, do you remember like your first time getting hired, or the first time someone said like, hey, do you want to come do this? Like, yeah, when does it? Start to take shape from like a, oh, this is fun in school to like, oh, wait, I might do this outside of school too. I think one of the first shows that I was approved for a photo pass that I had uh, submitted for was After the Burial at That's the Webster main show. stage. It was, I, I remember that being like one of the pivotal, like huge moments for me where That's I was cool. like, I think I can do this. Cause they, cool. they said that they looked at um, my website and were like, yeah, okay, sure, mm-hmm. we'll give you a photo pass. Um, but that was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And that was one of those moments where I was like, I think I can do this. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the first – I it's hard, it's fuzzy because it's so long it ago. Is. But, yeah. like, I was mostly just, like, really annoying to people. That's the goal. In, like, a respectful <laughs> and professional way, but just, like, constantly emailing. Like, I would go – even as far as, like, the city, I would uh, go down to Manhattan or Brooklyn a lot. And I would go to every single venue's website and look at who's performing mm-hmm. in the next, like, month and, like, see what days I had off from my job – and I would just see, okay, I'm free for this one, so I'll I'll find out who the manager is or who their press contact is and see if I can get a photo pass. And I would just, like, spend a whole day emailing different people for different mm-hmm. shows and just, like, pray that I got approved for a few. And over time, that started to happen more. And it helped me to come out of my shell, too, because I was really shy. I'm glad I was you said that. painfully shy, but photography and, like, specifically music photography really mm-hmm. helped me to, like, come out of my shell. I'm glad you said that you were like annoying people because I often reflect that I probably did the same thing. Oh, for sure. But there is some of that that you have to. And it is uh, about coming out of your shell. And for me, it was the same thing Mm -hmm. like getting comfortable and saying like, it sounds like camera was kind of in your blood, so to speak, by the Mm -hmm. time you were doing that. And for me, like music photography is my entry to photography. I was entering a camera and a concert at the same time first. So it was this weird like, 
oh, they don't know that I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll <laughs> pretend that it works. And then, hey, uh, but you have it. to get comfortable with, yeah, both of those identities. And for me, it was going to every person at the show and handing out business cards as much as I could and saying, hi, mm -hmm. I'm Peter. This is what I'm doing. If you want to see pictures from tonight, here it is. Literally, yep. And if you don't, then I'll probably see you next week. Yeah. But. So it's funny that you said that because I, for a long time, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I would just go photograph the show, go home, edit them, and then just like post them on like my Instagram and mm -hmm. put a few on my website. But then I was like, no one's like using them. The bands weren't using mm -hmm. them. So then I realized I have to go talk to them. And I was like, I have to talk to people. Uh, the worst. Like I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. Yep. I don't want to make myself look silly. Um, but eventually that helped me to kind of like push myself out of that comfort zone. And it helped me to kind of branch out and feel more social in a way. Do you still kind of water that like marketing part of this job? Like I think we, we all signed up to take pictures or to push the button. And I guess now I've signed up to take videos as much as I've signed up to take photos. But I find myself trying to be more mindful of that marketing side where I kind of went through this early thing where it's like, yeah, give everyone a business card. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I got busy and I was like, all right, cool. And then now recently it's been like, no, I can still find, like, even though I'm happy with the people in my life, I can still find more people to yes. bring the business in. Are you still finding yourself, yeah, working that advertising and networking yeah. side of things? I think that you should never stop doing that because, mm -hmm. well, you can grow with a band that you work with. There's no reason why you can't branch out and work for other people too mm -hmm. because you never know what the future holds for you, whether... XYZ band breaks up or they, you know, get a little bit bigger or you decide that you want to, you know, bump up your budget a little bit mm -hmm. and they're, they're kind of not able to take you anymore or something mm -hmm. like that. No matter what it is, like daily hires or for a tour, you always have to have more people and not just as a safety net. I don't want it to sound like mm -hmm. that, but like there's nothing wrong with c continuing to grow yourself and grow your business. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and as you've continued to grow your business, it did go from this local venue into, yeah, now being paid by some bands that I assume you grew up listening to mm -hmm. um, and have certainly grown up enjoying. How did that, yeah, how did that kind of come to be? I know you mentioned working with Currents. Of course, I've always seen you mm -hmm. uh, with the Currents crew. But yeah, when does that kind of become a, a real thing that's paying the bills and is a, a full-time endeavor for you? So touring became official for me in 2020, mm -hmm. everyone's favorite year. That was um, my first year full time as well. Yeah. So yeah, I, like January, I was like, I'm doing it. This is it. I'm cutting yep. all the ties. Uh, and then the March came nope. around, and it was like, <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. So I was uh, assistant manager at a brewery mm -hmm. down in um, Bethel, Connecticut, called Broken Symmetry, and I had been there two and a half, three years, and it was early January, and Brian also worked there part time. And he was like, you want to go to the uh, the bar across the street? And he was like, I have a question to ask you. And I was like, yeah, sure. So he was like, okay, well, we're going on tour with Silent Planet, and we're direct support for them. Here's all the details, and we want you to come and do photo merch for us. And I was like, yes, yes. What's that moment like? Yeah, take me take me to that table. I, what are you feeling? right? Because it's, it's exciting. Of course, it's the opportunity you've been hoping for. But it's also a terrifying call of like, all right, kid. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. What are you going through? Yeah. I had been fighting for that moment, for that question for so long. Of course, yeah. And I really wanted it to be Currents because mm -hmm. I had been photographing Currents at the Heirloom and the Webster Underground and for years. And there's something special about going with your friends. Like, right, There is yeah. something. It's like, cool for the, the people you look up to to say this, but for mm -hmm. your friends to make it and say, hey, come with us. It's I, a special I felt thing. a little bit of like a security blanket like mm -hmm. that because I'm getting asked by people who I know. Yeah. And I knew the members like who like, you know, Patrizio, all the members mm -hmm. who kind of like dominoed out. But when I finally had all these people that I knew in the band, I was like, yeah, oh my God, yeah. this is, this is perfect. Like I would love mm -hmm. to. And it was more of like a moment too of finally, I was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders, like all that fighting, all those grinding like yeah. years of like, it was like eight or nine years of just like shooting show after show after show. And it is a grind. A lot of them for free mm -hmm. after like driving all the way to the city and or wherever. A, and A lot of them are shows that we don't love, I think is the other. I think we all right. talk about shooting shows and a lot of times we are shooting our favorite bands, but mm -hmm. when we talk about the grind, it's like. It's not always a grind when you're shooting your favorite band, but that's one of every 10 shows when right. you're just showing up to the Webster saying, or in my case, yeah, what's at the underground tonight? It's mm -hmm. like a lot of them aren't shows that I would have bought a ticket to. Right. I did such a thing to be there and to get the experience. And of course, it's all important. But yeah, I think that's an important piece of the grind that we get. And it's like, yeah, Absolutely. you did shoot up to the burial and Polyphy and all these cool bands. But there's also a lot of bands in between there that just fell through the cracks of your yep. memory because they, yeah, that's it's, kind of where they are. Yeah, the you kind of, not to, I hate to say yeah. the word endure, but mm -hmm. just ones that you have to just go to and mm -hmm. sit through and just shoot just to try to, you know, yeah. get your own experience And of course, up. it's not that they're bad bands. It's just 
they are right. 10% of music that I like. Right. And the other 90% are not my cup of tea. Right. <laughs> and that's most of the shows. Yeah. yeah. But when, when he asked me, I was like, finally, like it's mm-hmm. all that hard work was worth it. Yeah. Um, I was I was so stoked because I also love Silent Planet. They're one of my favorite bands and awesome mm-hmm. people. Once I yeah. got to know them, they had helped me get photo passes throughout the years too. Mm-hmm. Like I remember there was one show um, at the Palladium they played with, uh, I think Volumes and Devil Wears Prada mm-hmm. years ago, and my photo my name wasn't on the photo pass, mm-hmm. so I was crushed because I had just driven all the way up to Massachusetts yes. and I saw Tommy and Bryce who was their team at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, who's in Phineas, he was like, oh, they were like so helpful to me, like getting in and getting everything settled. Like they were always so nice to me throughout the years too. So I was like, this is awesome. And then I met Imani on that tour Mm -hmm. and props to her. She helped me so much with kind of crash course of like, this is how you tour. This is what you should Mm -hmm. do. This is what you shouldn't do. She helped me so much. I love her. She's awesome. I think it's an interesting when you get sucked into the touring camp, you also need to learn how to tour. And Mm -hmm. if someone's been on the road for a while, they don't realize how different and challenging a lot of those things are yeah so to have someone take you under their wing and say hey i, I know this is new to you here's a, a crash course must have been huge and yeah yeah really she was my angel she mm-hmm. is my angel i love her she's the best yeah um when was that or that was uh i think it was it started like beginning of march okay and it was all of march and then it was supposed to end no i'm a liar it was mid-february okay and then it was gonna end like Late March. So it shuts down halfway through. We actually uh, got most of the tour done, thankfully. Okay. We were one of the lucky uh, tours out. Okay. We only lost the last five shows. It was four Texas shows, and then it was going to end in Pomona, California. Mm-hmm. Um, but after the Springfield, Missouri show, it got canceled. Gotcha. But we weren't one of the bands that had just flown and gotten to Europe, played one show, and were told to go home. That's a nightmare. So, I mean, yeah. thankfully, worst case scenario, but it was still, you know. Yeah. The better situation for us. Yeah. Um, and of course, then the, the world unfolds. And I know. I was like, I'm finally reforms. doing touring. Uh-oh. This is so sick. I was like, I was getting asked by uh, one band to go to Europe with them. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, yeah, this is probably like going to, you know, not last too long. And then if you want to go to Europe, if that tour is still going, I was like, this is sick. Mm-hmm. I love this. I Once I started touring, like that, that or the first week in, long. I was like, <laughs> this is it. That's it cool. felt like all the missing puzzle pieces came together. That's awesome. I felt like a glove. I felt so happy. I was like, this is what I've been wanting and I meant for it. Like I felt so good. That's so and then exciting. COVID said. That's cool. No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> exciting until that part. Everything mm-hmm. I would tell you that part was exciting. Yep. Um, but now you have since been to Europe, correct? So I guess that yes. Europe trip didn't happen, but you have since been. Mm-hmm. What has it been like to, yeah, now take this this thing you got in sixth grade. It's not the same thing that you got in sixth grade, but uh, yeah, your sixth grade self who's taking pictures of worms is now <laughs> getting paid to go to Europe and take pictures of cathedrals and all the cool stuff you see during the day. And of course the show at night. Uh, yeah. What is that like? It's surreal. Every day just doesn't really feel real because mm-hmm. it's also like a culture shock. Yeah. And then you're around all these people who are speaking a completely different language. And a new culture. New country the, each day, yeah. The architecture yeah. is so breathtaking there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot, but it was good. And I knew mm-hmm. most of the package too. I only didn't know Cabal and I had never met Suicide Silence, but I had already toured with After the Burial. I knew obviously Currents, Invent. I knew Spike because I had done a few tours with them. Mm-hmm. Or not a few. I, I hopped on part of a tour that Boundaries was on with them. Mm-hmm. So I'd met them before. Um, it was all kind of a bunch of friends. So that How was long-ish nice. ish were you in Europe? It was three weeks. Okay. It felt like longer just because we had just come from Australia, me and Currents. <laughs> we literally went straight from Australia to Europe. So, it's nuts. Yeah. but they were both amazing. I That's loved, incredible. I would love to live in Australia for like a year. Yeah. After being there, I fell in love with it. After, Touring there is awesome. That's the one that stands out after the different countries. That's my yeah. next question is, yeah, I, like what stands um, out as the. Australia was definitely the most beautiful place I've ever been. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then there were certain cities like uh, in the Czech Republic, Prague was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really busy. Okay. Here's, here's the thing. Yeah. Whenever people say, oh, you get to travel and see all these places. That's so awesome. I'm like, yes, it is so <laughs> So awesome, and I'm not, like, going to, you know, belittle that. Mm -hmm. But doing merch and video and photo, Mm -hmm. you a lot of your day is in the building until Mm -hmm. the lights, you know, the, you know, it gets darker or then doors are open. So there were, there were some days, uh, like a map out of day for me. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, So the whole thing or yeah. Uh, sure Say off, for Europe, for instance, we were on the, the two tour buses. We would do load in around 11 or 12 in the morning. Well, 11 a.m., 12 noon, and then load in. It was all hands on deck, so everyone would help load in everything. I was doing merch for both Currents and Invent. So I had both of them to set up and count in all the merch for. And then typically I would have like two hours before doors 
to catch up on editing for both of them because mm. I was also doing media for both. And then usually it's stores, and then I'm behind merch all day. And then when they play, I go take pictures, come back, sell, go take pictures, come back, sell, load out. Uh, usually takes about an hour or two. Um, so and the then conflict ends up being you either get to sleep or you get to see the place you're in. Yes. And there is no in between. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there were some days where we wouldn't get to the venue until we were able to load in, which is a bummer mm -hmm. because sometimes if we were there at like 9 a.m., I could go adventure with Matthew and go get coffee or something. Mm -hmm. But there were some days where it was a little bit tougher to go out and explore. And mm -hmm. you're mostly like you get back in the bus after the whole day's done and be like, oh, I didn't really get to explore this city much. But that was like, I would say, 30 percent of it. The rest of the, the tour, you're able to like go walk around. We had a decent amount of days off. We got to That's explore great. like Vienna, Austria. Mm -hmm. Prague was gorgeous. Oh, it didn't feel real. Prague was beautiful. But Interesting. I'm very grateful, even though a lot of the days are busy and you don't get to explore as much as people think you do when you say you're a, a touring yeah. person in the touring industry, it's still such a cool job. And, and especially I as media and merch, those are two kind of offstage jobs. So I guess for the band, it's like, not that they can relax and do nothing all day, but to some degree, they're done till 7 p.m. And then at 9 p.m., they're all done again. Like right. There's a little window in there. Yeah. Um, and usually they're busy or other stuff. I don't want to, yeah, not that they're doing nothing all day, mm -hmm. but when you have editing to catch up on, it's like you're shooting the show and you're editing, you're counting in merch, you're selling merch, you are counting out, I assume, taking care of some of the, the loadout stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's your day really is kind of nonstop all day. Yeah. You're, you're, and then even when you're back on the bus or back in the, in the tour van, like when I'm a, on a U.S. tour, my day isn't over. I'm usually right. editing if I can or if I have like a drive shift uh, like that night, I'll mm -hmm. do the drive shift and I'll sleep and then I'll try to get up early to edit or just figure out like map out in my brain like, OK, I have to drive tonight. So I'll just sleep now. Then I'll drive mm -hmm. and then I'll go back to sleep and I'll get up in the morning and edit or, oh, cool, I don't have to drive tonight. I'll stay up and edit. And then I get two hours of sleep because I can't fall asleep mm -hmm. after I finish editing and then I have to get up to drive. So it's like it's a weird day. It's, a, it's weird. Doing. It's yeah. a very weird little uh, dance, yeah. Does that get tough with all the different camps you're out with? So I assume when you're with Boundaries, there is a way that Boundaries does stuff, there's a way Currents does stuff, and I assume that things are similar. Um, but yeah, there's the differences with all the different camps of trying to keep your schedule where some band wants something at 9 a.m. and the next band doesn't care if it's there till showtime, and that those things kind of affect how, how you're would... I, I would say I'm pretty lucky because a lot of them aren't very like, hey, I need those photos right now. Mm -hmm. Like they know that I'm I'm pretty quick with my turnaround time. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm not, I'll be vocal. I'll be like, hey, like I had a very busy day at merch. I wasn't able to even like normally I'm able to upload my photos at the table at least mm -hmm. so that like if I can't edit them, they're at least uploaded so that I can get to them on the on the van. But if I'm if I think I'm going to be behind and not get them to them the next morning, I'll just say like, hey. I'll get them to you like after I finish loading in and setting up merch later tonight, like at like four. Um, but typically my turnaround time with all the obstacles is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have anyone being like, hey, like we need our photos at this time, this yeah. day. What's like a normal deliverable? I'm always like, I feel like some people send like 20 photos and some people in like a 200 photo camp. And I'm always curious of where, where people fall on that spectrum. I think the sweet spot for me is no more than 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. And l typically if it's 40 to 50, a lot of them are really good crowd shots too. Yeah. I'm not going to send you 10 to 15 individual <laughs> shots of each member. That is if so silly. 50, you better be the big festival shots and you, right. you got to get everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like Typically, if I send more than that, it's it's more so like a lot of crowd shots. Like the crowd looked really good tonight. The LD mm -hmm. knew what they were doing and they actually put lights on the crowd when they were crowd surfing or mm -hmm. Brian or Garrett or Matthew get into the crowd and like on top of them and mm -hmm. the the LD actually put the lights on them so I could get cool photos of that, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say typically I try to do no more than like 35 a day um, per show. If I do more, it's yeah, typically crowd shots or just behind the scenes. If I was able to get some of them, like the green room and stuff, or getting ready before they go on. We touched on it earlier a little bit of like the the process of like keeping things fresh creatively. How are you tackling that like actively around the road? I guess when you're in Europe, it's probably easier because there's so much gorgeous stuff going on. I assume all the venues are old theaters that are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the states and you're driving through. Yeah, some of the less exciting places that we can go. How are you keeping things fresh? What are you doing? I guess pulling the lens out you mentioned. Um, but yeah, how do you tackle that where you're not sleeping too well? You've done the show 20 times. You've delivered all the things. It's like, yeah, where does the next idea come from? I would say I, I really try to keep my camera on me at all times. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if I am setting up merch, if I see them doing something funny, I'll try to like leave for like a minute and go capture it. Mm -hmm. um, I really am at the mercy of 
if I'm around them, I'll get it. But mm-hmm. if not, like I do have other jobs to do, so I can't let those suffer. Mm-hmm. Um, How do you balance that? I mean, they 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 need media to f- sell tickets to the next show, and they need T-shirts to get gas money to the next show. Mm-hmm. Like they they're these two things that are very important that you're providing them. Like, how do you balance? Uh, yeah, you mentioned if I'm there, I can take the photo, but I can't always be there. How do you yeah balance those two? I would say merch does take. It has a bit of a, a grip on me because mm-hmm. I need to make sure that that's all correct. I need to mm-hmm. make sure that I'm fully stocked so that I'm not an hour into the show, into doors being open, and then I'm running low on a T-shirt because I forgot to restock that one and take out what I need, and then you it affects stocked, them. Like, from the van or stocked from stocked the... from the trailer? Okay. Yeah. So like, say I don't do a proper like count in, and mm-hmm. I don't see what I'm low on. That will affect me and then affect them. It'll be a domino effect because mm-hmm. I'm not making sales. People don't want to hear, oh, well, the guys will go restock me in a few minutes if you want to come back in like an, uh, 20 minutes. Yeah. Some people will just walk away so you could potentially lose a sale. So I have to make sure that merch is 100% all mm-hmm. the time because mm-hmm. um, at the end of the day, that's that's their money and that affects my tips too, yeah. stuff like that. So that uh, I need to make sure that merch is 100% all the time. Um, there are some days where it's harder to get, you know, the behind the scenes stuff because you are behind merch. Mm -hmm. Um, but days off are, you know, good for doing that. Um, I even have been kind of good at getting behind the stage, like 10 minutes before they play to try to get those like Mm pre-show photos them with like, you know, they're gearing up, they're putting on their, their their (laughs) battle, their (laughs) battle armor, stuff like that. Um, it's more so just like kind of kind of take it day by day. Mm-hmm. It really depends. Every day changes. There's always something else that comes up. So you never really know what you're going to get every day. Uh, kind of on that same note there, I've had this dilemma that I've been thinking about recently, and it's totally changing gears, I guess. Um, but my, my thought here is that like we do such a cool thing with writing photos, and we are supporting them, and in some way we are yeah helping them get to the next venue and helping the next city know that these people are, are cool and exciting and mm-hmm. tell them they're coming. Um, but I... We're also not brain surgeons. We're also not doctors. No. Like there's a there's a very novelty aspect to what we do, and I think that can be troubling for me at times because it's like, yeah, it's this cool thing we do, but are we gonna look back when I was 16 and go, all I did was take pictures of these people and like share these memories? And there's the flip side of that is there is this like happiness that we share with people, and it's not just the band. Of course, it's the fans that we right. enable and empower. Yeah. Do you ever have that like almost existential crisis of like, am all I doing is taking pictures or are you? It's like imposter syndrome a little bit Mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. I sometimes, sometimes I feel like, could I be doing more? Mm -hmm. Cause there's some things that I see other people doing and I'm like, damn, that's sick. Like Mm -hmm. I wish I could be doing something like that. But then I have to kind of reel myself back in and be like, you're doing everything you can with what you have. Yeah. And I, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job Mm -hmm. of what I am doing with, you know everything that I have to deal with, all the things that I have to juggle. Um, and back to feeling like, oh, like if you look back when you're 16, all I did was take pictures of people. That's the most important thing you can do, in yeah. my opinion. I recently was at my parents' house, and they put on old home videos, mm-hmm. and it made me so happy. It brought me right back to my grandma's surprise party mm-hmm. with all my family there. And seeing like me and my brothers when we were younger, seeing my parents when they were younger, my grandparents, ever, all the people who have you know passed away, who I mm-hmm. who I miss, like stuff like that. That's very important. So people yeah. will look back at what you did fifty years from now and be like, "That was awesome. That was yeah. really cool." Like, ugh, yeah. oh, it just like there was one day that it was an off day with Currents, and we were in the hotel, and the guys were being so goofy and silly. I was mm-hmm. like, I have to record this, so I just took my phone out. Mm-hmm. And I was just recording them being so funny. And they were like, no, don't. Like, we're like this is stupid. And then my phone had, like, put – I just took those videos for myself. I didn't even necessarily take them for, like, you know, media. But my phone, you know how sometimes, like, in a month, like, it'll, like, summarize, like, okay. a specific day. Mm-hmm. It specified that one day. And it put together every video that I took and, like, pictures and made, like, a collage and put a silly – it sounded like That's the funny. Toy Story song. Like, it was just so funny. Mm-hmm. And then Matt, the drummer from Currents, he was like – I am really glad that you recorded all that because looking at that is like awesome. It's mm-hmm. so funny. We were all in tears watching it. And that was like, that's the same thing. That's cool. Like yeah. when you make a recap video and you put those funny like behind the scenes moments of like the guys goofing off and like mm-hmm. when friends come to visit at a show and they are hanging out, like that stuff, they're, that's there forever now. You captured mm-hmm. moments that they're going to cherish forever. And yeah. I think that's very important. So I have to remind myself like there are things that I wish I could be doing mm-hmm. and I know that one day I will get there. But that just takes a lot of, you know, patience and you got to learn and, you know, f- you know, not give up. But. Yeah. 
I think especially with Tor, there is that immense sacrifice of, yeah, there are other things we'd all love to do, but there's only so much we can do. And I think uh, for me, it's not touring, but just as a business owner, it's like, yeah, that's number one. And that takes priority of a lot of things and takes a lot of time and uh, is the, the bulk of my focus. And yeah, subtract some other things I'd love to focus on. Um, for you, you kind of alluded to there are other things you'd maybe do eventually. Um, is there other, is it creative endeavors? Is there other like, uh, I know you saw the cats. Is there like a vet mm. shop that's exciting to open? Like, yeah, what else is exciting to you in the world? It's funny. I actually um, reached out to the uh – like animal shelters mm-hmm. to see if I could like take photos of like animals that That's need to cool. be adopted out. Cause yeah. I know that so many times I'll see pictures and it's like, you can tell they took it on their 500 year old mm-hmm. iPhone. Yeah. And I'm Someone like, meant well, but didn't thinking, do a great job. With yeah. It. I'm thinking like sometimes like all you need is like a really good picture Definitely, of a dog. Yeah. Like maybe like do like a little setup, um, something like that. Just like as like a random, like in between tours and stuff. But as far as like media wise, maybe I want to, I do want to get better at video. Mm-hmm. Um, and every day I'm looking at videos and tutorials and trying to learn and teach myself because I am pretty much self-taught with mm-hmm. the help of friends. I'm like, hey, I don't know how to do this. Can you teach me? And like Chris Klump is one of those as an example. Mm-hmm. He's great. And Monty was great. Mm-hmm. Um, just I kind of want to do more like documentary style, like mm-hmm. larger scale videos versus reels that are going to be put on Instagram and TikTok and viewed for four seconds until someone swipes up. Yes. There's a real competition there where of course yeah that is exactly what everyone wants and it's a hot topic and it's what's going to get the most clicks the most attention and there it takes the least time and has the most reception like why would you not go for that yeah but there is something so fulfilling about yeah that 20 minute 30 minute piece of like no this is this is what the road was yeah <laughs> here's the road make um, it feel like a like a mini movie because mm-hmm. there were bands like from like the glamour kills tour era mm-hmm. i keep bringing that back up but like it just makes me think of that mm-hmm. like bands would do so many like videos featuring just behind the scenes, what mm-hmm. they're doing every day. They're the making a diaries. sandwich. They're being silly. Yeah, yeah tour diaries are yeah. like, I hope that those come back. Mm-hmm. I think they are. I've been seeing a few bands doing it. Um, but stuff like that I think mm-hmm. is really important. And yeah, you know, they play shows and they have fun on stage, but like what do they do yeah. when they're not on the stage? I think that's really cool. Like you're not entitled to know what – bands do all the time like you don't mm-hmm. you're, you're not entitled to that access to them 24 7 but anything that they're willing to give you any sort of like like dip your toes into their life a little bit mm-hmm. if they're welcome if they're welcoming you i think that's really cool and i think that bands would you know benefit from that as far as like bringing more fans into them definitely i think it ultimately helps you become friends with your fans in a way that makes you personable and then you are relevant to them in a way that if i just know your music it's like that's a that's a thing Right. That I can forget, but a pe- person you don't forget. It makes it, you more of a person to them. Yeah. Like without indulging, you know, without, without giving them too much information about your personal mm-hmm. life, but just stuff that they don't care that you know about. Like, oh, like this is a stupid thing we did on our day off. Like we're, we're silly boys. Like, you know. There's an interesting uh, dilemma there that I'm curious about where you mentioned that you filmed on the cell phone and the filming on the cell phone has become great because we all understand what things look like from a cell phone. So when I film on an iPhone... Everyone can imagine what the camera saw. Mm-hmm. Because when I film my DSLR, it's a much harder thing for someone to put themselves into because they haven't held the camera, they haven't used it as much. Right. And that becomes interesting in the context of the 30-minute documentary, the travel vlog. It's like that's probably just been replaced by people talking to TikTok and going live, and that's yeah. become where that is. But it's not fulfilling or exciting to create, and I don't want to be following people around my iPhone. So how do you balance this? Yeah, I want to make this bigger thing, but it, the, the mediums that are exciting right now aren't quite – accessible to that or supporting it I and mean, yeah. there's a, a bridge to cross there somehow yeah because you see so many like influencers like with their phones out and they're mm-hmm. like it's like ugh, it feels i, I think ugh. i uh i think it was jar like the work of jar i mm-hmm. don't know him personally um i th- i think it was something he talked about and if not then i'm putting words in his mouth it's kind of messed <laughs> up on my end um, but i think it was like a thread on twitter he's talking about that yeah he films like with a camera and the iphone on the other hand almost because mm-hmm. yeah there is just a relationship that the iphone can give to a viewer that a camera can't because cinematic it's a little bit more it's more right it feels like a little bit more of a disconnect when you're mm -hmm. when you can tell it was filmed like a dslr jitters feel real like we all can feel that we all know that and Mm -hmm. can put ourselves in the moment um but that yeah subtracts the art form that we love and want to share with the world yeah because i'm like i spent a lot of money on my camera gear Mm -hmm. i want to use it (laughs) but there are i i will you know call myself out there are a lot of candid moments in my reels and my Mm -hmm. uh videos for like currents and boundaries Mm -hmm. a lot of those like back like them goofing off a lot of that is taken on my phone yeah 
Uh, one yeah. person who made me not feel ashamed about that was Anthony Trin, mm-hmm. who works for he's, he's worked man. for uh, yeah. the Used Fever Three Three Three, Pierce the so Veil. Funny. I've never met him in person, but we worked together on a Fever Three 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 video. Yeah, a little bit ago. He's was, awesome. Uh, just the best. Yeah, I've, I they were just in the area, and I wanted to go and meet him, and I had a different video that day. And oh whatever. no! Um, but that's funny you mentioned him. But yeah. yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He's always been there to. He's another one that gives me a lot of advice mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, yeah, he's great, and he even told me he was like, a lot of my behind the scenes are filmed on my phone because mm-hmm. I can't have my camera out at all times. There's yeah. sometimes when I'm like in a city, I don't necessarily want to be flaunting an expensive, you know, camera, or yeah. I don't have the the time to take my camera out and put it in a video and mm-hmm. blah, blah blah blah. Like, yeah. if your phone is more immediate, and everyone's gonna be viewing it on an iPhone anyways, so yeah, yeah. it's an it's interesting. All that matters. Uh, it is accessible. I think the. Sometimes I think people take that too far and say, oh, we're going to get replaced. And it's like, no, I don't think the no. iPhone ever catches up. I think uh, I, I'm in, uh, I'm always curious about the things that the iPhone can like replicate digitally, like the bokeh, the depth of field stuff where yeah. like, they can't have depth of field. So they just taught it to trace people and blur the background outside mm-hmm. of it. And that like AI stuff is like, it can get close, oh, yeah, the AI stuff but it'll never quite get there. No, it is I a, don't, a similar thing. I understand um, the, the apprehension mm-hmm. and people being nervous, but I don't think it, I think it'll fizzle out. I think it's a trend that will die yeah. and not like completely take over. That's interesting. You're right that it probably will. We'll go the other way that people get tired of all this raw content. It's like, no, show me the professional polished thing that's clean and feels good. Yeah. And they'll get tired of the, the more handheld kind of DIY stuff. Yep. Um, interesting. Uh, moving forward, what is, what's coming up next? So I know we have a tour coming up in a little bit. Uh, is that full U.S.? It's technically full U.S. It's Lorna Shore. Mm-hmm. Um, with, I'm going to be with Boundaries doing mm-hmm. uh, media and merch for them. That is like two and a half weeks long, and then we're doing um, routing shows on the way back because it ends in the PNW in like Seattle, mm-hmm. I believe. So Shadow decided to kind of take Lorna's place and do a headlining spot, and then we're all gonna do I routing like shows. That as well. That's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna do routing shows on the way home, which is really cool, and yeah. it makes it more worth driving across the country back home. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll be back uh, end of April, and then it's more of like just immediately prepping for the current headliner. Mm-hmm. So tours, tours, tours through the, yeah. through the future. Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself touring until the wheels fall off? You're going to be 35 and still trying to make it happen, 40, 50 on the road. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to stop. I feel like 28 is the new, you know, 18. Yeah. I feel like I'm young and there's no need to stop if I feel like I was I when, I was like, when I was 16, I thought everyone touring was 22. And then, like, you, I'm 27 now, 26 now. And it's like, yeah, you realize that everyone is our age. Everyone's 30-ish, plus or minus, a couple years. Yeah. Like, there's very few 20-year-olds out there. Like, yeah. I thought I was I mean, there aged were, out by Yeah, now. like, there were a few, uh, but, like, they yeah. were the rare ones. They were, like, the yeah. the savants of, you know, the music industry <laughs> yeah. who got in. And, like, good yeah. for them. That's awesome to be yeah. in it so early. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon, um, even if I decide that I don't necessarily want to do, like, like, if my body can't handle merch anymore because mm-hmm. it takes a toll on your body, it wrecks you. Sure. Um, if I want to continue doing media, hopefully I can get hired just for that. That is a goal of mine. I would like to, by 2024, be hired as just media for a band. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be really, really fun. Speaking Even though I do love merch. Merch is fun. Yeah. And talking to the, you know, the fans is awesome. Mm-hmm. The it's tip. really like front lines, unique experience. Yeah. Um, like being kind of like the face of the band when like they're not around is really cool. Um, I'm sure there's some punishers there as well. A, little, a few, <laughs> but it's all innocent. So I'm like, oh, yeah. this is really sweet. You don't we know can talk that, about that after the camera Yeah, you cuts. don't know that I'm busy right now and I have to get through the line yeah um but yeah i would love to keep doing it even if i decide i, I want to like stop doing that maybe eventually get into uh, tour managing or something i've dipped my toes in that with currents but it's hard to tackle it with you know mm-hmm. all the other jobs but yeah i see myself wanting to be in the touring industry for the foreseeable future hell yeah well, sarah i appreciate you coming on we are Thank perfect you. right on time ish cool. um Cool. What can people look out for? Where can people find you online? What should they look for? Uh, yeah, so I have um, all socials. I have a TikTok. I have uh, Instagram, Twitter. They're all linked on all of them, but my Instagram is the main thing I use. It's uh, Sarah Holic Photo. I have a web- website, too, for contact information. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> I appreciate your time, and we will talk soon. Thank you. Cool. Big round.